Alrighty guys, let's talk about one of the big killers for, let's say a lot of low to mid handicappers who struggle with blocks and hooks in regards to their lower body movement towards the target, right? And I was one of those players yeah. when I was playing, you know, my leg stability wasn't quite up to scratch at the very beginning. Okay. I used to sway off it and then you, you're basing it all on timing then. Mm. My hand-eye coordination is really good, yeah. but it had to be because I moved so far off it, I had to time it perfect. And when it was off, when I went too far that way, that's when it was off. I felt like the club had come a bit from the inside and then it's like, oh, where do I go from here? So I'd either get a little bit of a block or that killer shot that would turn up. Yeah, for sure. And in its most simplistic fashion, essentially the more that my body is rotating, guys, the more stable this club face is relative to the target, meaning that if I turn, 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 this club face is not really incentivized to roll over. But let's say I make a pretty good backswing, but I stay in this position and I let that golf club just come down, well, you can see how much that club face is going to turn over. Now, at the end of the day, we're still releasing the club. It's not the end of the world, but it does require an element of timing for that to happen. But playing at the level that you've done, nine times on tour you've won. Yeah. So, <laughs> We, we, we need to kind of tidy things up occasionally because the errors for margin out on tour really aren't as, let's say, kind as what they are for the, the amateur golfer out there where they get a breakfast ball and a mulligan, right? So what was one of the drills and exercises? I've seen a bunch on your Instagram, so make sure you go check that out, guys. Um, but there's one specific one that actually Pete Cowan gave you, isn't there? That you're working on a lot to kind of tidy up what you're doing with that lower body. I mean, this was towards the end of my amateur days, the very beginning of my pro days, this was literally the only drill I ever did. So yeah, so basically all he did was got me feet together. The first thing this did was really synchronize the upper and lower body and it, mm. it gets them working properly. Okay. But what it did for me was it stopped that initial, that it movement for me. Yeah. That was my initial start of the backswing. Okay. And then I had to make up the... Now, so on the downswing. relating back to, let's say, the discussion about the, the through zone, would you say that when you were shifting away from the target in the backswing, so your lower body was tending to drift away from the direction you wanted to hit it, yeah. that was also really encouraging and forcing you to have to slide even more on the way through? I had to slide even more because I had to make up the distance. So if I sit on the backswing and then don't do anything, yeah. I'm going to be coming, I'm going to be hitting the ground back here because I'm going to be coming so shallow. Yeah. And then you add in loft, I mean, you'd hit it up your nose. So <laughs> Couple of moon balls. I then had to shift. And when my timing was off, I sometimes shifted too much. And then that's where the inconsistency came in. When the timing was on, it was great. Mm. You know, and there was a lot of lag and a lot of speed and I hit it long and I, you know, hit my irons a long way. Yeah. But when it was off, yeah. It was a killer. So when I got on tour, it was all about bringing those dispersions in. Mm -hmm. So I sacrificed a few yards, but I gained a lot more consistency through this drill. Okay, so I want you to hit a couple just doing with your feet together for us. Yeah. And just talk about the differences in the feel that you have relative to what you remember having that sensation of when you were swaying too far back and through, yeah. right? So this kind of like stacked on top appearance, upper and lower body, go ahead and hit a couple for us. So the first thing that it helped me do was keep my height. Yep. Because obviously when your legs collapse, you lose your height. So it helped me keep my height, but it also made me feel like my legs were less engaged and everything was just more of a bit more of an upper body rotation. I took okay. the legs out of it a bit because yeah. my legs were way too overactive. Yeah. So it was literally feet together, just three quarter shots, but it just gets gets the body moving nice. Do you feel like you're almost turning in a barrel? Absolutely, absolutely. You could put two poles there mm. and I wouldn't touch either. Yeah, okay. For that visual, why don't I actually do that just so the guys at home can see it. And I want you to set up and look guys, I'm gonna put these clubs probably a fist length outside of each hip, just as a reference here. And go ahead, Simon, you won't hit me. Perfect, and you can see how much he just turned within the boundaries of those through that feet together drill. How long were you doing this drill for? Because we see a lot of players, they'll, they'll go on the range and like, okay, I'm swaying too much back and through and we're gonna do five or six reps. Yeah. And then I've got it. Yeah. But no, you're saying you did it for years so and I you're a tour player. I did it for years and it was my warm up. It got my body synchronized. It got to a point where I hit it that good with my feet together. Yeah. 
that I would then go on the course and I'd have like a three quarter wedge and I would literally do the same because I knew I, I knew exactly the flight I was going to get. Yeah. But you'll notice it, you'll, when you first start it, mm. there'll be something that doesn't quite sink and yeah. that's where you're, that's where you are out of sync. So I haven't done this for a while. Yeah. And now it feels like just around here is a little bit out. Mm. So if I hit 40, 50 balls doing that, then I would feel so much better with it. Now, um, a lot of the time the players at home will then go, well, how do I actually turn this and translate this into a golf swing? I don't want to be standing out there in front of my friends with my feet together, but just the same as any other skill guys. So I'm, it's very important that you almost have a bit of a training plan with the way that you go about doing this drill. Absolutely. So. My recommendation to players, for example, such as the feet together drill, would be five of these shots with the feet together, yep. then one normal swing, being totally outcome focused on your target. Yep. And just let that new movement from which you've evolved and started to ingrain in your swing naturally take over. And you'll be surprised, even on that sixth swing, after you've hit with your feet together, your body will make much more of a center turn. 100%. I think it's just one of those that you, you get the feel, like you say, I like that rule of five. Mm. You hit five with it and then you go, and all of a sudden you have to reset. And then it's like, right, what does it feel like now with a full swing? Yeah. Right, okay, it felt like that. So maybe we just need to go and do another five. Yeah. And then you go and hit another five. Right, let's go and performance base now. Right, well, that felt better. Yeah. Everything's starting to sync up. Yeah. And that's the only way you can really translate a drill into your actual game. People will stand here and go 200 balls feet together and then they get on the first tee. Before they know it, they've just flicked back into their old method. Correct. And they go, what a waste of 200 shots they were. Yeah. But you haven't translated them properly. And we were talking about this before and you were having a discussion uh, with Claude Harmon, uh, Butch Harmon's son, and talking about the importance of being able to translate these skills from the range out onto the golf course. It's so important because there's no point grooving this picture perfect, uh, well sequenced golf swing here, but as soon as you get the ball slightly below your feet, you can't hack it because you haven't built that awareness of the pre-shot routine, the intent and the reflection upon the outcome that you've seen so you, then you can adjust. So guys, one of the most important things you can ever do when practicing, and you heard it from Simon Dyson here, nine times tour winner, is all about ensuring you're able to then translate this into your golf swing on course and having these five reps like Simon and myself have been discussing followed by one shot which is totally outcome focused not even thinking about turning your hips is the way you will ingrain this over a long period of time without standing over the ball on the first tee swinging a barrel swinging a barrel swinging a barrel it's, it's not going to work like that is it not work. yeah it's mate not let's um let's hit two more with your feet together for me and then go ahead and hit a full shot so two more feet together and then a normal shot Beautiful. And look at that start line, guys. Like, all day. You know what? I might have to do this. <laughs> it's good because it's good because, like I say, you're automatically syncing your upper and lower body together. Yeah. Like, that feels a little bit out of sync. But I know if I did this for 20, 30 minutes, yeah. it'd start feeling great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously good. Seriously good. Okay. That normal... felt even better than the previous one. Yeah. And purely based on the fact of the repetitions. Uh, being conscious, yeah. being slow, being aware of what you're doing. No need to go full speed on those feet together drills, guys. Nice and slow to start off with. All right, let's shell it down there. Beauty, mate. Look. Nice neutral ball flight. The body felt really like it was turning properly. Absolute frozen rope. Went from doing the feet together drill, a few great reps there to get a sensation, keep the upper and lower body on top, stop swaying, something that Pete Cowan gave him and led to a lot of tool wins, mate. Thank you so much. Cheers. Awesome.